Nana Gomer Retelawa, Gonga Tavua, and the Talita Canavar on Radio Fiji One, Nando Maviti. Radio Fiji One, Nando Maviti. Yana Vinaka and good morning, Fiji. In this bulletin, lot allocations under the spotlight. Millions of dollars still owed in town rates. And 66 traders in Kandavu under investigation. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Fijians living in informal settlements who will soon be receiving their 99-year leases will not be allowed to profiteer from the subsidized lots. Housing Minister Pramila Kumar reveals there have been several cases where people who were given subsidized lots have either sold the property or the land is still vacant and in some cases rented out. These subsidized lots were meant to assist low-income earners. However, some have abused the assistance for their personal gain. Pranita Prakash reports. Questions are now being raised on whether some Fijians living in informal settlements deserve subsidized lots. If you go out in an informal settlement, you will also come ac across people who are running the business. Right? They're running garages, they're running shops, they have got uh, trucking businesses. Should we be providing these families with a subsidized lot? If someone can afford to buy one, why should government be subsidizing them? That is taxpayers' money. Based on a thorough investigation, the housing ministry is now working on a draft policy to tighten procedures for informal settlement lot allocation. We intend to provide a bigger subsidy to those households who are, I would say, their income level is much lower as compared to those whose income level is higher. And then as your income bracket or income level increases, say up to 50,000, subsidy level will decrease. The minister says those households earning below $10,000 a year will get a 90% subsidy on the market value, whereas those earning $50,000 and above will have to pay the full market price if they wish to own the lot they are currently living in. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. While the towns and city rates owe to the 13 municipal councils run into the millions, the Nasinu Town Council reveals that over 4,000 ratepayers have not been paying their rates for years. The Nasinu Town Council Special Administrator's Chair, Baskaran Naya, says there are around 11,000 ratepayers in Nasinu. The Nasinu Town Council is owed just over $9 million in unpaid rates. Naya says other steps are also being taken to collect outstanding dues. We are also uh, doing um, sort of house to house campaigns. We are uh, going to the workers, uh, the rate payers worker as well, so that uh, we can talk to them while they are at work. And uh, um, these measures have helped, you know. We, have, we are saying to them that, you know, uh, if they can make arrangements to pay, and see, you know, we would be happy to look at arrangements uh, because some of them can't afford to pay all at once. So that is an opportunity as well for them. 66 traders on the island of Kandavu are under investigation for non-compliance. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission says most of these traders are habitual offenders. Chief Executive Joel Abraham says despite several visits to the island, the commission is optimistic that a majority of these traders will be charged. Kelly Vadala reports. Astonished with the high level of non-compliance in Kandavu, the FCCC says no one is above the law no matter their geographical location. Uh, we are quite uh, disappointed given that we have raised awareness on multiple levels, given that we visited Kandavu quite often to make sure that the traders are aware of what the rights are, uh, what their responsibilities are under the FCCC Act. Uh, unfortunately, what has happened is uh, traders have chosen not to comply. And our message is quite simple. The same message that we give to traders on Viti Levu, on Bono Levu, it doesn't matter where you are, you're operating within Fiji, you have to follow the laws of the land. Joel Abraham says they found that 94% of the overall complaints were non-compliance. The team has gone through uh, details. There are some traders where the uh, evidence is not quite clear, but 66 are under investigation and uh, with the level of non-compliance and with the level of breaches that we've seen and the type of breaches we've seen, we're optimistic that we will be placing charges on uh, most of them. 
Kandabu villager Josea Wakumbulu says majority of the people on the island are not aware of the consumer rights. Some traders have been found overcharging the villagers here and I am thankful the FCCC was able to make it to the island so we're not cheated. I am grateful that they came because traders should work within the law. The FCCC says they expect ethical behavior from traders in the maritime as people in these areas are more vulnerable compared to those in the urban centers. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. The Fijian government is fighting tooth and nail to ensure the Buller bubble does become a reality and allow for international travel to commence. Minister for Economy Ayaz Said Kayyum says discussions with relevant bodies are continuing. He says the Permanent Secretary for Health, together with the PS for Tourism and Transport, are talking to their counterparts in Australia regarding the Buller bubble. Our Honourable Prime Minister has written to um, Jacinta Ardern uh, regarding the Buller bubble. And we hope to get some traction on that front very soon too and have advanced discussions with New Zealand as we are having with uh, Australia. A number of local musicians and artists will have a concert in Suva aimed at raising funds for the Fiji Society for the Blind next month. The funds will go towards the purchasing of musical equipment for the institution. Labelled as the Mana Voyage in Darkness, I See Love in Your Eyes Art Initiative, patron Jane Seam says the project also focuses on exposing the many hidden talents. The concert, which will be held on the 12th of December, also gives back to the community. I can organize a concert to, in, to support the local music. And I can organize a concert for a very, very special society. I think this audience will appreciate music 10 times more. And then they need music 10 times more as well. For them to feel the beauty of art, the beauty of nature, and the beauty of our vocal channel or and human creativity, which is instrumental. In an effort to assist Fijians facing difficulties due to the current pandemic, a leadership coach will hold a one-day coaching program in Nandi. Well-being and leadership coach at Leader Hive Coaching, Kithiana Chute, says the program aims to raise a person's level of self-awareness. Chute says these are hard times financially for people, but they can be guided in order for them to succeed. She says the program will also provide income opportunities for businesses in the West affected by the pandemic. I had conducted a few mastermind trainings for free because I realized that there was a huge need you know, for people to get some sort of hope for their lives. And um, having conducted at least five or six ma mastermind trainings in my uh, community, what I realized is the morale is really low. People are looking for some sense of hope and affirmation. Last month, Chute held a leadership training with the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation. The program will be held next month on board the MV Maximum Fiji. Consultations has begun on a draft national ocean policy mapping the way towards 100% sustainable management of every square kilometre of Fiji's ocean, with 30% to be declared marine protected areas. Permanent Secretary for Fisheries Benem Bale Nambuli says the government is taking a more focused approach to managing not only the health of Fiji's oceans, but also the bounty that it provides. Bale Nambuli says they will work with development partners to better manage over 1.2 million square kilometers of Fiji's exclusive economic zone. He says conserving and protecting Fiji's fisheries is critical and work is continuing in this area. There's a bit of work that's uh, going on right now uh, for the past couple of uh, years. Uh, marine protected uh, areas is one uh, commitment that uh, Fiji as a nation has made to the uh, international community. It's a movement by, uh, led by the United Nations and it's a uh, closely linked to uh, climate change, it's closely linked to uh, resources uh, management. Up ahead, back to the drawing board for police. And Futsal IDC pulls drawn. Hi, Bula. I'm CLI from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
Set piece play will be crucial for the police rugby team as they prepare for the upcoming Ratusukuna Bowl. Police rugby team manager Felipe Savo says they've identified their weaknesses from the Escort Shield final clash against the Navy. He says they will need to brush up on these areas before facing traditional rivals' army. Scrums. We have to we need to get it uh, better organized, and uh, maybe all or not. The Avengers volleyball squad bond remains steadfast by the week as they compete in the Digicel Suva Volleyball Club League competition. Despite facing a few challenges at the beginning of the competition, it has not failed to dampen the team's morale to continue to perform in the league competition. A newly formed team made up of students at the University of the South Pacific, the side has been creating upsets, defeating big names like Army and USP. Team captain Wayne Fisher says they will be taking each game as it comes. We are suffering from a few setbacks, but that's uh, not an excuse for us to continue to strive to be better. We, we are competing with uh, a better team each week, so the whole goal is to try and keep uh, bettering our performance in order for us to continue to maintain this level for the coming weeks that is ahead of us. The Vince Works Suva side had a perfect start in the Vodafone Fiji Fact, defeating Active Construction Navor 4-1 in their opening match. Christopher Wasasala, Meli Donro, and a double from a scoring sensation, Sairusi Nalaumbu, bagged the win for the capital side. President Ritesh Pratap says getting the win on the first match is crucial as it sets a strong foundation for the remainder of the tournament. We've been losing the first games. When we lose the first game, then it is very, very hard to proceed in the tournament. So I think it was very, very important to, uh, for us to win the game. And I think the main message from the coach was to don't miss those chances and we need to score. Defending Vodafone Futsal Inter-District Champion Suva has been drawn in a tough pool for the 2020 competition. Suva, who was the top contender in the 2019 championship in August, has been drawn in Group A with Navua, Rewa, Nadronga and Lambasa. In Group B, Alami, Nandi, Mba, Tailevu, Naitasiri and Tavua. The tournament is scheduled to be held at the FMF Gymnasium in Suva from December 3rd to the 6th. Quick look at the weather map for today. It is Monday the 23rd of November, start of a brand new week. And if you woke up this morning and saw the sunshine, don't be fooled. A trough of low pressure remains slow moving over the group. Associated cloud and showers continues to affect the northern and the eastern parts of Fiji. Best you keep those umbrellas close when out and about. And that is your FBC Morning News. Join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. Remember, in times of crisis, you need factual news that you can trust. Stop believing fake news about the COVID-19 on social media. Fight misinformation by getting only the facts about the coronavirus from verified news sources like FBC's TV, radio and digital media news. FBCnews.com.fj, keeping Fijians connected with the truth. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.